Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of our podcast. Today, we're diving into a topic that is absolutely crucial for any PhD student, effective data analysis in doctoral research. Understanding your data and knowing how to analyze it effectively is not just about filling a requirement. It's about uncovering the story your data tells, which is essential in crafting a compelling dissertation. Our goal for today's episode is straightforward, but powerful. We aim to equip you with practical insights and tools that will empower you to analyze your data effectively. Whether you're just starting to think about your data or you're in the thick of sorting through complex analyses, this episode is designed to give you actionable strategies that you can apply right away. We understand that dealing with data can sometimes feel overwhelming. It involves numbers, complex software, and statistical methods that can seem daunting. But don't worry, I'm here to break it all down for you in a way that's easy to understand and implement. We'll focus on simplifying these concepts and ensuring you leave today's discussion ready to tackle your data with confidence. Remember, the ability to skillfully analyze data not only supports your dissertation, but also strengthens your overall research acumen. So let's get ready to turn those raw numbers into meaningful insights that truly support your academic goals. Stick with us, and by the end of this episode, you'll be better prepared to handle your data and propel your research forward. Let's get started. Today on Dissertation in 90 Days, we're diving into a topic that's pivotal for every PhD student out there, data analysis and doctoral research. Now, I know that just hearing data analysis can make some folks a bit anxious, but trust me, by the end of our session today, you'll not only understand it better, you'll be ready to tackle it head on in your own research. Let's start by defining data analysis in the context of doctoral research. Think of it as the process where you systematically apply statistical or logical techniques to dissect your gathered data. This isn't just about crunching numbers or organizing responses. It's about turning raw data into real insights that inform your dissertation, making the invisible visible. Now, why should you care? Here's the crux. Data analysis is what makes your research valid. It's what substantiates your hypotheses and ultimately contributes to the pool of knowledge in your field. It's the difference between assumptions and evidence. Without robust analysis, our research findings might as well be guesses, and that's not what we're here for, right? Moving on to the types of data you'll encounter. Broadly speaking, there are three, qualitative, quantitative, and mixed methods. Qualitative data will come from interviews, Observations may be texts where you're looking at non-numerical data to understand themes and narratives. Quantitative data, on the other hand, is all about numbers. Whether from surveys or experiments, you'll use statistical tools to draw conclusions. And then there's mixed methods, a blend of both qualitative and quantitative. This approach can really strengthen your research, giving you multiple lenses to examine your hypotheses and validate your findings. Understanding these types and using them effectively allows you to not just navigate, but excel in your doctoral journey. Each type has its unique strength, and knowing how to use them will elevate your research from good to great. So stick with us as we delve deeper into each of these data types and share practical tips on how to analyze them effectively. By the end of this, you'll be more than just familiar with data analysis. You'll be proficient. Let's get started. All right, let's roll up our sleeves and delve into the actual techniques of data analysis. Whether you're crunching numbers or sifting through interview transcripts, knowing your tools and methods is key to successful analysis. Let's break it down into quantitative and qualitative techniques. Starting with quantitative analysis, it's all about the numbers. Here, we use statistical techniques to either describe our data or infer relationships. First up, descriptive statistics. These are your basics like means, medians, modes, and standard deviations. 
They help you describe your data set in a nutshell. What's the average score? How varied are the responses? But then we move beyond just description to inference. Inferential statistics allow us to make judgments about our data that extend beyond the immediate data set. This is where you get into the realm of t-tests, ANOVA, and regression analysis. Each of these tests has a specific function. For example, a t-test can help you compare the means of two groups, while ANOVA lets you compare means among three or more groups. Regression analysis? That's about understanding the relationship between your variables. How does one thing predict or affect another? And to handle all this data, you've got some powerful tools at your disposal. SPSS, Stata, and R are some of the top software choices for statistical analysis. SPSS is user-friendly, great for beginners. Stata is a bit more advanced with capabilities for complex data manipulations. And R is extremely powerful especially if you're into customizing your analysis with coding. Switching gears to qualitative analysis. This is less about numbers and more about understanding deeper meanings and patterns in non-numerical data. One popular method here is thematic analysis. This involves identifying patterns or themes across your qualitative data. What are people talking about most? What common threads emerge from the interviews or focus groups? Then there's the coding process. This is where you break down your data into manageable parts. You start with open coding, just marking down everything that seems interesting or significant. From there, you move to axial coding, which starts to organize these codes into categories or themes. And finally, selective coding, the stage where you start to weave these codes into a cohesive story, focusing on the main themes that tell us something significant about the data. For managing all of this, there are software tools designed specifically for qualitative analysis. Envivo, Atlas.te, and MaxGuday are some of the leading options. These tools help you manage, sort, and organize your qualitative data, making the process more manageable and less overwhelming. Both for quantitative and qualitative analysis, these software tools play a crucial role. They do more than just simplify the process. They provide a framework for consistency and rigor in your analysis. By using these tools, you can ensure that your analysis is robust, replicable, and transparent, which are key elements in scholarly research. So, whether you're dealing with statistical data or narrative data, remember that the technique and tool you choose can greatly influence the quality of your insights. Always select the method that best suits your data and research questions and leverage these tools to help lighten the load. They're not just there to make things easier, they're there to make your research stronger. As we wrap up this segment, remember that the heart of data analysis, whether quantitative or qualitative, is about telling the story of your data in a clear, precise, and meaningful way. It's about turning raw data into knowledge, and that's a beautiful process. Moving forward in our data analysis journey, let's chat about one of the most practical decisions you'll make choosing the right tools for your analysis. This isn't just about picking the most popular software. It's about what works best for you and your specific research needs. First things first, consider the type of data you're dealing with. Are you crunching numbers from surveys or experiments? Or are you analyzing text from interviews or observations? Your data type will heavily influence your choice of software. Quantitative data often requires robust statistical tools whereas qualitative data might need software that's adept at handling text and enabling detailed coding. Once you've nailed down the type of data, think about your specific analysis needs. What kind of tests or coding strategies do you plan to use? Make sure the tool you choose can handle those requirements. It's like picking a new smartphone. You want to ensure it has all the features you need for daily use. Now, let's talk about some practical considerations. Cost, ease of use, and compatibility with your data types. Cost is a big one. Some tools can be quite pricey, especially the ones loaded with advanced features. If you're on a tight budget, look for open source options like R, which are free and still incredibly powerful. Ease of use is another crucial factor. Tools like SPSS are known for their user-friendly interfaces, making them a great choice if you're not keen on steep learning curves. Lastly, compatibility is key. Ensure that the software you pick works well with the data formats you'll be using 
and integrates seamlessly with other tools in your research toolkit. Once you've selected your software, the next step is to actually learn how to use it. This can seem daunting, but there are plenty of resources available. Many universities offer workshops or courses on popular statistical software. These can be invaluable for getting hands-on experience under the guidance of an expert. Don't forget about online tutorials and forums. There's a wealth of information available online, from detailed video tutorials to community forums where you can ask questions and get advice from other researchers. These resources can be especially helpful when you run into specific challenges or advanced techniques. In summary, choosing the right tool for data analysis in your doctoral research is about matching the software to your specific needs and ensuring it's something you can afford and learn to use effectively. By taking these considerations into account, you'll not only make your research process smoother, but also more enjoyable. As we wrap up today's discussion on data analysis, I want to leave you with some practical tips that can make a big difference in how effectively you handle your data. These aren't just steps to follow, they're habits to cultivate that will strengthen your research and simplify your life as a PhD student. First up, staying organized and keeping detailed notes. This might seem obvious, but it's crucial. Organize your data files, code books, and analysis results in a way that you can easily retrieve and understand them later. Keeping detailed notes of every step in your analysis process is not just about diligence. It's a safety net. If you ever need to go back and check or explain how you reached a certain conclusion, these notes will be your best friend. Next, never underestimate the value of regular consultations with your supervisor or mentors. These are the folks who have been where you are now. Use their experience. Regular check-ins can provide you with guidance, prevent common pitfalls, and save you a lot of time and headaches. They can help you see the bigger picture when you're too caught up in the details. Finally, embrace the power of peer review and feedback. Sharing your analysis with peers or even presenting at seminars can open up avenues for constructive feedback. This isn't just about finding errors, it's about refining your approach and gaining new insights. The feedback from these sessions can be incredibly valuable in fine-tuning your data analysis, ensuring it's as robust as possible. By staying organized, engaging regularly with mentors, and seeking out peer feedback, you'll not only enhance the accuracy of your data analysis, but also deepen your understanding of your research field. As we wrap up today's enlightening journey through the world of data analysis, let's quickly recap the key takeaways from our discussion. We started by understanding what data analysis really means in the scope of doctoral research and why it's absolutely crucial for validating your findings and contributing meaningful knowledge to your field. We then navigated through the various techniques and tools you can use, whether your data is numerical or narrative in nature. Remember, choosing the right tool, like SPSS for quantitative analysis or InVivo for qualitative insights, is pivotal, not just for ease, but for effectiveness and we round it off with some practical tips to keep your analysis process smooth and reliable. Stay organized, keep detailed notes, consult with your mentors, and don't shy away from peer review. These practices are your best allies in the journey to a successful dissertation. I hope today's episode empowers you to view data analysis not just as a requirement, but as a critical enriching step in your research journey. Dive into it with curiosity and the right tools, and you'll uncover insights that can truly illuminate your work. Don't forget to join us next time for more insights and practical advice on navigating your PhD journey. We'll be diving into new topics that will help you stay ahead in your academic endeavors. Until then, keep analyzing, keep discovering, and keep pushing the boundaries of knowledge. Thanks for tuning in to Dissertation in 90 Days. Catch you in the next episode. Happy researching, everyone.